Lord God, thank you so much for this evening. We're grateful and thankful that we can come together, Lord, to bring you glory with our words and our actions, Lord. I just pray for everyone here tonight that you continue to work on us, sanctify us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help us to encourage one another. I pray whatever words you bless me with tonight are your words, Lord God. I pray for all those who didn't make it tonight, for whatever reason, that your hand just be upon them, wherever they may be. Let them know your presence is there with them, Lord God. I pray for the Doyle family. I pray for healing for Lisa over what she's going through. And I pray for for peace and patience for Billy and all that he's dealing with, Lord God. And we just pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today's 4th of July. I'm guessing a lot of people are barbecuing. I was barbecuing this morning, uh, this afternoon with my sister's family. Uh, she has a pool, so we were hoping to get into the pool, but God had a, a change of plans. It poured the whole time, so we couldn't enjoy uh, the pool today. But that's okay, right? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about conduct and how we should be. And we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 13 to 17. So verse 13 reads this way, therefore, all right, I got to stop right there. When I see the word therefore, you need to ask yourself a question. What is the word therefore? Therefore, So in the first 12 verses of this letter that Peter wrote, he reminds believers the certainty of our future inheritance in Christ Jesus, which is preserved by the power of God. It's proven through trials of persecution, however they may come for us. And it was predicted by the prophets. So that's what the therefore is there for. So it continues, therefore, get your minds ready for action. All right, I got to stop here. Get your minds ready for action. Your Bible verse may say, gird up the loins of your mind. That's weird terminology. I had to look it up. What exactly does that mean? Back in the day of Peter, the men would wear long cloaks, if you will, long almost dresses, When they needed to get ready to work, ready to fight, battle, ready to run, they would pick it up, up until it was above their knee, and then tie it off so that they can then proceed to work or be ready for battle. Get your minds ready for action. So he's telling, this is Peter, right? This is the same Peter who told Jesus I will die for you. Whatever you do, I will do, and I will die for you. And Jesus said, will you? You're going to deny me three times this night. This is the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. I don't know about you, but I've denied Jesus probably more than three times as a believer. Whether if someone was talking about Jesus in, in a bad light, and I just cowered, and I didn't stand up for what I believe in Jesus, I'm convicted of that. I can relate with Peter through this. And this is the Peter that Jesus talked to after his resurrection and said, Peter, feed my sheep. And this letter is part of Peter feeding Jesus' sheep. And Peter, again, is telling us, get your minds ready for action. I know we talk a lot in small groups about the mind being the battlefield, that there are thoughts that just because you have a thought does not mean you need to carry that thought out. And that's what Peter's saying. He's saying you need to prepare your mind for what's about to come. Paul, apostle, talks about this needs to be done daily. This needs to be done all the time. Peter, excuse me, Paul talks about praying unceasingly. We need to continuously be thinking about God. Therefore, get your minds ready for action by being fully sober. Your Bible verse may say, be of sound mind. 
or be of self-control. They all have the same meaning behind them. For those of you who come from a background of addiction, some of the worst decisions you've ever made were while you were not sober. So he's warning us, be fully sober. That's one of the steps in preparing your mind for the battle that's coming, for the battle that happens every day. And set your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. That word grace is one of the greatest words in existence. It's that unmerited favor that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we still sin, Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. We just need to turn to him in those times of trouble and confess to him the wrongs that we've done. So let's continue into verse 14. So in 13, Peter's talking about therefore. He just, we just talked about what that therefore is there for. We need to have our minds right and ready by being sober, setting our hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. So be sober-minded. Set your hope that the reality that Jesus, when he first came, came as a lamb to give his life for us so that we can be cleansed and forgiven of our sins no matter what it is that you have done. But he's coming back. And when he comes back, we should be prepared for that time. And when he comes back, he's not coming back as a lamb, but he's coming back as a lion. Therefore, we need in verse 14 to be like obedient children. How can we be obedient children? Peter tells us, do not comply with the evil urges you used to follow in your ignorance. When I didn't know what sin was, I was ignorant. I didn't know any better. I just did what I thought was right for me or what the world told me is right. All of those people out in the world that think smoking weed, maybe that's what they're doing today. It's legal. I can go smoke weed. I can go get drunk. Let's party. It's July 4th, right? They're ignorant of what those choices will happen to them, how that could just be a process, steps along that path to addiction. So Peter's warning us, be like obedient children, Do not comply with those evil urges that we used to follow in our ignorance, right? We no longer follow them because we are no longer ignorant that those evil urges, those temptations that we have, Bible talks a lot about taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That goes back to verse 13. Get your minds ready for action. Verse 15 says, But like the Holy One who called you, become holy yourselves in all of your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy because I am holy. Now this idea of holiness is not moral purity, but it's apartness. God is apart. He is separate from his creation. And he calls us to share in that and to be ambassadors to other. As Paul says in Ephesians 5.1, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. When we call on Jesus as our Lord and Savior, one of our identities is that as a child of God. Everyone who is born is a creation of God, but not everyone is a child of God. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can call God the Father, Abba. We can call him Daddy. So verse 17, and if you address his father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, live out the time of your temporary residence here in reverence. So if you're a Christian and you call on God, realize that he shows no partiality and he's going to judge our conduct. So this makes a working, preparing your mind for action, 
sober, a self-controlled, sound mind, and holy walk, not being partakers of the world, all the more important as we sojourn on this earth. And we need to do so in the fear of God. We are not of this world. We are in this world, but we should not be partakers of the things of this world. We need to keep our eyes on the heavens because Jesus will come back again. Part of today being July 4th, I want to talk a lot about freedom. And there are so many verses in the Bible that talk about the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Today, people are celebrating the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, uh, 1776, when the Founding Fathers declared their independence from England. They wanted to be free. They wanted their freedom from England. As Christians, there's something greater that Jesus has freed us from. And I want to read Romans chapter 6, verse 14. This is from the NLT. It says, Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. We no longer need to give in to those ignorances that Peter had talked about, that temptation which would lead to sin. We now are under a law of grace, God's grace, that we've been forgiven. Sin is no longer our master. Jesus Christ, when you've confessed his name and believed in your heart who he is, you've been freed from that sin. A couple more verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. One of the requirements of being a leader, especially at a lot of churches, especially for this ministry, is not to drink, even if that was never your issue. Because if someone sees a leader of an addiction and recovery ministry having a beer on 4th of July, it's going to be a stumbling block that Paul is talking about. Oh, look, I saw Leo. He, he just had a, a Miller Lite. Maybe, maybe I can have one. Maybe he never had a drink before. If he saw me drinking, I'm a stumbling block, and that one drink might lead him into a world of addiction. So I know it's on Mike's heart, Billy's heart, everybody's heart that none of us would drink. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When you call on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're indwelt with his Holy Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. You, therefore, are free. A couple more and then we'll close out. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin, so we receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Jesus Christ. It's only Jesus Christ that's going to free us from sin. Galatians 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 5. God sent him, that him is Jesus, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. That freedom allows us now again to be children of God. And the last verse I want to touch on is Galatians 5.1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Don't go back to the way you used to be. I know too many people who've said, I'm all right, I could handle one drink again. Then they lost a lot because of that choice. So I want to implore you, if you're hearing my voice right now, don't go back to the way you were. Live for Jesus, continue to walk with Jesus every day. As Peter talked about, The mind is the battlefield. Be sober-minded in all of your doings. Continue to walk with Jesus. Continue to read your Bibles. 
And I want to thank you tonight for coming out to Ground Zero. It's great to see everybody who came tonight. And let's close out in prayer. Lord God, thank you again for this evening. I'm grateful and thankful for the words that were spoken tonight, Lord. And I just pray for everyone here that we have safe travel home, Lord God. I pray over all of our discussions that we'll be having. And I just pray that you bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.